there are four key uses for a Facebook business page, and they're very important. So we need to have them. But I'm going to go into, I'm going to focus today on that Facebook business page, how it should be used. I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you the four ways we do use it. Okay. We had previously discussed marketing on Facebook in an organic fashion. And we talked about how you primarily do that through a Facebook personal page. Okay. And we talked about the difference between a personal page and a business page um, and why the personal page tends to get a lot more traction from your organic posts. Right. So if you're looking to reach people, specifically members of your sphere of influence with your posts and the content that you put in your posts. For example, if you're doing a Facebook live at an open house and you want people to see it, we should probably be doing that from your personal page because more people are going to see your personal page posts. And we talked about why that is. Um, and that's because of Facebook's algorithm. Facebook is going to show your posts to people that want to see your posts. And Facebook is going to deem that the people that want to see your posts are the people that interact with them. So if you post a lot from your personal page and people like it and heart it and emoji it and comment on it, then Facebook's going to show them more of your posts. And quite frankly, personal page posts are going to get more traction because they want to see photos of you and your babies and your, and your anniversaries and your birthdays and your moms and all that kind of stuff. So they like them all. So when you do post a Facebook live about an open house, they're going to see it, right? But on your business page, it tends to be a little bit more business oriented content. You're typically not posting happy anniversary to your wife as much, although we should think about doing it. So, cause if you just post a bunch of commercials from your business page, you're not going to get a bunch of engagement with your commercials. People aren't going to like the fact you're having an open house. They're not going to comment and say how cute under your new listing post. So because of it, you don't get a lot of act, you know, in, uh, interaction with your Facebook business page posts because no one's liking them or commenting on them or interacting with them or engaging with them. So no one's going to see them. So if you're depressed that every Facebook business page post you put out there only gets one, two or three likes and they're all your family members, Understand that's pretty much everybody, even the top, okay? So, but there are reasons to have a Facebook business page and there are many uses for it outside of organic post reach. So remember, you know, key Facebook marketers know that if you're looking for post reach, organic post reach, in other words, you organically just post it, you don't pay for anything and getting a lot of people to see it and have it go viral or something, that's gonna come from your personal page because the people are liking your personal page more. Make sense? But there are a lot of reasons, mm -hmm. namely four of them, that we should have a business page. There are four key uses for a Facebook business page, and they're very important, so we need to have them. But please don't confuse them. Organic post reach is not one of those four, okay? And a lot of people get confused by that. But I'm going to go into, I'm going to focus today on that Facebook business page, how it should be used. I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you the four ways we do use it. Okay. Now, the first way we use it, understand is the first of the four reasons, okay, for your Facebook business page is that it's your modern day website. It's your modern day website. Okay. There used to be a time, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when people went on Google to find people. Now they go on there to find companies and things. But when you want to check out someone, where do you go? That's right. You go to the Facebooks. That's what you do. When you want to check out someone for whatever reason, you go check them out on Facebook, maybe Instagram, which is Facebook's little sister, depending on where you, where you, where you go. But all this will kind of work the same way. We'll talk about Instagram sometime here in the near future. But right now I want to focus on that Facebook business page. Okay. So that, and that's what we're finding is when people want to check out a person, they go to Facebook just as much as they do an internet search engine. So you need to look good where they're looking. So if your Facebook business page doesn't look good, we've got a problem, right? We've got a serious problem because that's where they're checking you out. And if you don't have a good Facebook business page presence, how the heck are you going to market their home for sale? You don't look very professional if you don't. 
So think of your Facebook business page for starters as your website. If someone already knows about you and they wanna check you out, how will you look when they go check out your Facebook business page? Your Facebook business page in this sense is not a lead generation tool, it's a lead conversion tool. They already know about you, they're going to check you out. You need to look good and impress them if you wanna convert them into reaching out to you and getting the listing or maybe even representing them on the buyer side. You need to look professional. You need to look like you know how to market. You need to look like you know that you're tech savvy enough to have this page and have it look good. In this day and age, there's too many people that know how to make a Facebook business page looking good. If you don't know how and they do, they're likely not to go your direction. So have it look good. Be where they are. Look good where they are. Be professional and impress where they are. And trust me, they are on Facebook checking you out before they hire you quite frequently. So let me let me tell you a little bit of what that path looks like, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen with you here for a minute. Let's say I'm on Facebook and I just took one of my clients who I know won't mind. Her name is Danny Beyer, okay? And so I'm gonna check out Danny Beyer and this is me taking her to her personal page first, because oftentimes I'm going to go check out their personal page. I might go through all their photos. Oh, look, there's some cocktails. Uh-oh, do we want to have cocktails there? I don't know. This looks kind of classy, though, so I think I'm okay with this. Um, Uh-oh, more cocktails. Is there a problem? I don't know. Just remember, they're going to check you out here. I think this is fine. This looks pretty professional. It looks like work environments. It looks like they're fun. I'm okay. But if it's you you know, in a bikini with red solo tops, you know what I mean? Maybe doing a keg stand upside down. I don't know if you really want to show that side of you because remember, I went to check out the personal page first. Some people are going to go straight to that personal page. And the way they look for you is they go up to this little search bar here and they type in the name Danny Buyer, right? And what comes up is I could either check on her personal page or I could go down to her business page or I can go right to her photos. See that? So you better look good because they're checking you out. This is the public, you're in the public arena. You need to be, you're in marketing. So you need to look good there. So control what's in your photos, especially these first nine that are displayed on your homepage. Make sure it gives off the vibe and the professionalism that you wanna give off. And do show these nine photos here on your personal page, by the way, because it's really nice. I don't wanna go searching through all this stuff. It's just right here, I can look at them and get a feel for who you are. But here's the most important thing. It needs to link to your business page, okay? See where she works? She works at Danny Buyer Real Estate. See that? She doesn't work at Remax. She doesn't work at Keller Williams. She doesn't work at Century 21. She works at her business page. So when I click on this link, I go to her business page, not the brokerage's business page. Why the heck do you wanna send them away from you to the brokerage's real business page where all the other agents live? That's not a good way to convert a lead, to send them away from you to somebody else's real estate website, <laughs> okay? So make sure that underneath on your personal page, it actually shows a link to your business page. Because oftentimes people in your sphere of influence that know you will check you out on your personal page first, and then they will drop down to see, okay, now I wanna use them for real estate. Where do they work? There it is, click on it, and then they're gonna see how professional you are, hopefully. We're gonna talk about how to do that. This makes sense? So really important that that link takes you just to there. Don't have a link to there and to your brokerage page. Now you're confusing them. They might click on the brokerage page. The only link you should have there is the one that drives them to either your real estate website and your Facebook business page. Take them to places that take them through your sales funnel closer to contacting you. Because in both places, you should have easily displayable buttons that they can click on to contact you. Make sense? Everybody get that? So let me share my screen with you one more time. So when they search for her, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go into this Facebook search bar and they're gonna type in her name like I showed you before, right? And what's gonna come up is either her personal page or her business page. And they're gonna click, they're either gonna click on the personal page and follow that little funnel to her business page, or they're gonna go right to the business page, either way. 
But either way, we got to have that business page looking good. Okay. Either way. So that business page has got to look good, which means we've got to have a real nice cover banner image up here. I'm going to show you how to create one of those. It's got to be fitted perfectly. It's got to have a little room for this little bump over here. It's got to show up nice on your mobile phone too. So it's got to be just the right size that Facebook wants you to make it so that it fits in up here. You can even actually have a running video up here now if you want to do that as well too. Need to have a profile image down here. Need to have a name. You need to have a website for this Facebook page. Her Facebook website is at Danny Byer Real Estate, real estate agent. Easily searchable, has her name in the name so it will show up when people type it in the search bar. Remember, this is a conversion tool. So having something like Visalia Real Estate or Los Angeles Real Estate or Kentucky Real Estate, not going to help you. People are not searching for that on Facebook. They're searching for people on Facebook, namely you. So have your name in there so you show up easily when they search for you. Make sense? This isn't the internet. Don't confuse the two. Okay. Then remember, this is your website. So remember that call to action I told you about? That learn more takes them right to a contact page on her internet website, dannybuyer.com. Again, her name's in there. Perfect. Understand your organic website, which we'll talk about later, your organic Facebook page, they're going to search for you. They're not lead generation tools. Your website's not going out and attacking people and finding people. Posts from it might, just like your business page doesn't like move around and go attack people and show up in their searches. They've got to find you. And the way they're going to find you is because of your name. If you ever, and let me give you an example of what that looks like. I mean, I'm sure most of you have Gmail or Google Mail or something like that, right? Have you ever like tried to type in somebody's email address and you hope that your memory picks it up by typing their first name so you don't have to type the whole email address? Google will just auto-populate and show it as one of the examples and you can click on their email address. Isn't that nice and convenient? It's one of the best underrated tech features out there. But then you got that one person that doesn't have an email address with their first name in it. It's like office at something, something, something.com. So you're never going to type that in. So you start typing their name. It doesn't come up. And then you got to reach out and find their address or take some other steps because that's the one person who didn't type or didn't create a searchable name for a search bar. Don't be that person. Put your name in the Facebook address of your business page. So when people type it in, it shows up very, very quickly. Don't annoy people. Show people you know how to market. Remember, on Facebook, they first search for people. If you want that person to be you, make your name searchable in every way, shape, or form. Okay? Create a nice banner image. This is the most important thing. This is the most important thing on this page. It's the first thing they see. Most people won't scroll much. If they've got bad internet, the wheel's already moving and they can't go any further, nor will they have the patience to do it. Okay? And then, as we move down, fill in everything. Make sure your office address is here. Make it look personal. Okay. Make sure you have links to your other social media platforms. Make sure there's a clear phone number here. Make sure there's a way to email you here. Make sure there's a link to your other social media, like your Instagram here. Okay. Start getting people to like your page. So it looks like you've got a little credibility. That's really the only reason to have people like your page. Trust me. It's so that when people look at your website, it looks like you're cool. That a lot of people like your website. So you're successful. Don't think that's going to make people see your posts because it doesn't. Remember, the, re the way they see your posts is they have to like them or comment on them or engage with them when you post them. So even though you may like someone's page and you start seeing their posts, if you don't keep interacting with them, Facebook will stop showing them to you. But so that's the only real point of that, just to let you know. Remember, I told you, this is your website, so it's got to look good. So does it look good? I think so. Look at her posts. If I scroll down a little bit, she's got something about what your, a tool for what your homework little email you could pick on there for a free home value estimator, kind of looking for sellers, right? Then they're doing a first time home webinar. Looks nice, attractive image here that was created. So same with this one. Scroll down a little further. Oh, look, it's some diversity, right? Now we got one of the agents on her team doing a, a Facebook Live video. Another agent on her team doing a Facebook Live video. Oh, look, Here's a, a, a new listing on her property. Oh, doing a tailgate giveaway for one of her client events. Nice design, kind of a blue theme here we're seeing. A lot of the same fonts, a lot of the same detail. Oh, look here, another new listing mixed in. Here we go, an open house this weekend mixed in. 
moved back for another open house, a little different color, mixing it up, another open house coming by. Here's a new listing. Here's another giveaway. Do you see that cadence? We're getting agent video, client event, client event video, open house, open house video, just listed, just listing video, mixing it up, rotating, showing off our different things that we do, showing off the different ways we can market, showing off that we're tech savvy, Got some good clear photos displayed over here too. No one's gonna go much further than that. It's just your website and we're just checking out to make sure you're doing a good job. Here's a blog post about, uh, you know, whether to rent or buy from her website. Here's a to client testimonial, you know, from some people that just bought and sold a house. Another giveaway, another client testimonial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Nice rotation, nice cadence posting regularly at least once a week, sometimes two and three times a week, so that it looks up to date, it looks lively. Having the other agents, you notice every one of these has been shared a few times because the other agents on the team are then sharing it, so they have content to put out there to remind their, their people in their database that they're in real estate. But notice they're not getting a lot of organic looks here. Only five or six likes per page. They're okay with that. They know that, remember, the organic post reach from your Facebook business page is minimal. It's minimal and it's supposed to be minimal. Remember your organic post reach is gonna come from your personal page. This is a static website. This is supposed to look good when people come to your business page. So they come to your business page, does it look professional? I think it does, right? I think it does, okay? So it's kind of nice. I'll show you some other ones too. Here's another client of mine. Um, this is the Noah Bailey Group. We are, this is a client of our co coaching companies. They have kind of a cool logo as their image here, this yellow, and they have a yellow theme. Again, Noah Bailey Group is the title. You can book an appointment with them now, so you have a nice call to action on there. You scroll down, you can meet one of their agents. Again, everything's filled out, looks professional, bunch of different ways to contact them over here, bunch of people like their page, got a map of where they work. They're out in St. Augustine, Florida. Nice cadence here, moving into a just sold property, moving into a just listed property back over to an open house. Then here's a little video of an open house. So they're diversifying well, another open house. Here's a little team group picture. They won some award or something like that. Move it over into another open house, another group picture. Pretty cool as we move through. Another, there's a photo of where they live, kind of marketing their area, trying to show that they know how to show off and market. I mean, I want to go to their area. That looks pretty awesome, right? So it's a nice cadence of moving around. Um, showing off their listings, showing off the business they do, showing off their ability to market properties, showing off their agents, showing off their team, um, showing off the difference between static posts, graphic design, video, showing off their different uses, mixing it up a bit, looking very, very professional. Okay. Same here. This is the Eric Craig real estate team. Uh, another guy there in Smithville, right in the middle of the state in Missouri. Uh, same deal here, another similar format. You can reach out and contact them easy. What's the name? The Eric Craig Real Estate Team. Same thing, easily searchable. Um, move through all the way to contact them. Here they are thanking one of their vendors. Here's a client testimonial. Here's a meet one of their new agents. Here's a just listed. Here's an open house. Here's a video of their huge client event. By the way, this is a client, this is probably one of the best client events on the planet. They do an entire citywide block party that has thousands of people show up. Um, literally, like it's 4,000 people. They do it for an entire city. So they farm an entire city of like 10,000 people and they do an entire festival uh, where they block it off and have like four bands playing. Anyway, they're marketing that through video of last year's event, then a just listed beautiful drone video to catch the eye, new listing, another client testimonial. See, it, see a trend here, how they're rotating? So if you come to their static website on Facebook, it's gonna look professional. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna look like they know what they're doing, right? So it looks good. But again, if you look at their posts, I mean, they got five likes here. So don't get discouraged if you don't get a bunch of interaction with your commercials. People don't like commercials unless they want to see how well you make commercials and they come to you. That's why your business page is a website. It's a website about people, right? Now, if you look down here, this, this video, you can see a little trick. They got 68, of, 68 people to like it, four comments, 25 people shared it. Why did this video get so much interest? 
We're gonna talk about that in a minute. That's probably because they either boosted this post or ran it in an ad, but I'm guessing they boosted this post. In fact, I'm almost sure they boosted this post. So they boosted it and then a lot of people, which means they spent some money. This wasn't organic. So there is a way to get a lot of likes and comments. You can spend a little bit of money. It doesn't cost much. I'm gonna show you how and why we do that here in a little bit. So every now and then, if you see one post that gets a lot on somebody else's page, it's almost always because it was boosted and that'll get it a lot of interaction. That'll get a lot of interaction, okay? Now, one of the things you'll notice here, see all these nice images, how nice they look, especially over here on Noah's. Look at these, all these images all look themed. They don't have a graphic designer, guys. See that they're all using all the same fonts everywhere. And it just looks really nice and beautifully organized. Danny does it really well here. She's got this logo and this font and all these fonts, and she's creating all these images. So the place where we do that, believe it or not, anyone can be a graphic designer nowadays. You don't need to be this great graphic designer. And you've heard me talk about it before, but I wanna show you quickly what it does for you because every realtor should be using canva.com, okay? Canva.com, that's C-A-N-V-A.com, okay? And let me show you what canva.com looks like and how we can use it. And if you haven't used it in a while, please watch. This is Canva. You can see this is their logo. It's this little blue script Canva, okay? C-A-N-V-A. This is my account. You can sign up for a free account, uh, which is gonna have everything I'm gonna show you today. If you wanna spend some money, it's like, I don't know, it's like eight, 10 bucks a month or something. If you wanna get a business account, then you can share it with team meeting, team members and stuff. You get opened up to more, a few more designs and stuff like that. But everything I'm going to show you today is free on their general signed up free account. They know that if you sign up, you're going to get hooked because you do. If you're in real estate, you got to have this. You're going to use this for personal stuff too, right? So this is, and I don't get paid by Canva or anything like that, but you got to have this stuff. All right. So just to let you know, so give you, I'll give you a quick run through of what you can do with this. Um, but right here across the top says, what will you design? You can look at presentations. So you can create your own listing presentations buyer consult presentations. You can create one that's super mobile friendly, one that works on your app. They're all sized appropriately, okay? They're all sized appropriately for you. Social media, this gets awesome, right? You can create images that are perfectly sized for Instagram, Facebook, Instagram stories. Those are the long rectangles. Your story, what's up status. I mean, some stuff you'll never use. Uh, Facebook cover page. Remember that big Facebook cover you needed to create at the top of your uh, business page? You can go in here and create it, right? And you can just go through here and, and check. I mean, you can do, oh, I want to use that image or nope, maybe I'll use that image and I'll start with that. And then I can come in here and I can, I can delete it and type my name, Brian Eisenhower, you know, and all of a sudden, I mean, boom, it's done, right? And they have endless templates to choose from. I mean, go over here to the right, look, and just keep going, you know, boom. You know, and boom, I can go in here and just change the text. I can change any image I want. I can upload any image I want, any logo I want. Whatever you want to do here, you can completely rotate it all over the place. Okay? So that's your Facebook cover page. It's really easy to do. Okay? But it, I mean, Canva, I mean, you can create, again, your Facebook cover page has to be different than your Facebook profile image, which has to be a different size than your Facebook post image, which is a little bit more of a rectangle than the totally square image of an Instagram post. Canva gives them to you sized perfectly. If you're gonna do a Facebook or an Instagram story, those need to be long vertical rectangles. Guess what? They do that. If you're gonna put a YouTube thumbnail, Canva's gonna do that for you. How about the YouTube info image? That's gonna do it for you there. TikTok video, all of these things, okay? So they have endless Pinterest pins, different sizes. Twitter posts, perfectly sized. YouTube channel art, that's your cover banner image uh, on your YouTube page. How about your LinkedIn banner image? All done for you. If you haven't seen Canva, that you got your money's worth today. I'll tell you right now, because if you're not using it, every realtor's using it. You're the one person that's not. So we gotta start using it. Video, you can create image overlays for your videos. Look how cool that looks. See this first one here, how you've got some nice text and a banner image below in front of your video, in front of your Facebook video, in front of your video message. All of that done for you. Print products, get, get ready for this guys. Business cards, you can make yourself a hoodie, I guess. Um, you know, different marketing images. How about flyers? You can create your own logo here. Go into a logo creator and make your own logo for your team. It's got tons of already made logos for you and just kind of keep playing with thousands of them guys 
thousands of them. You want to see something cool? There's also a search bar. Check this out. Get ready to be your mind blown on this one. I'm going to type in real estate flyer in the Canvas search bar. Get ready. Oh, look at all these real estate flyers. Just listed, just home, know the price of your house, open house. Look at some of these. I mean, they look freaking good, man. It's done for you. Just type your name, put your photo in here. Go ahead and type on this and change it out. Put in there Brian Eisenhower. You can even be him if you want to. Take, take out these photos, put yours in, change the size of them, change the text here. It is so darn easy, it's unbelievable. So darn easy. And if you go through here, oops, somehow I went past real estate flyers. There's endless real estate flyers, real estate mailers in any size. So look at all these real estate flyers. Open house, just listed, just sold, meet the agent. Look at them all. Any design you could possibly want. Look at that. Endless. Endless. How do you not use Canva? And then check this out. So if I just type in real estate, let's see what it gives me here. Real estate postcard, real estate slideshow video, real estate yard sign, real estate video, real estate brochure, newsletter, newsletter. You could start sending out your own newsletters. Look at this, every every week having a newsletter go out or every month and in your email, maybe on Facebook too, maybe print. All done for you. Ah, oh, Canva. Okay, so that's canva.com. I strongly, strongly recommend you guys getting onto Canva. I mean, it's every realtor's best friend. I'll be the first to tell you that. Uh, and that's how you create all those images so your real estate business page looks like a business page. It looks like your website. Make sure you pick some fonts that you use so it looks kind of consistent like a website was because they're gonna scroll down it don't be using different colors all over the place and different fonts all over the place. Kind of like your Instagram homepage, it's looked at all as one. So make sure it's presented all as one, okay? Our presentation needs to look good. It needs to have a mixed up cadence. We talked about that consistency of posting at least once a week. And so it's fresh and updated and then having a cadence where we mix it up. It's not just a bunch of properties, right? It's client testimonials, it's meet the agents, it's you know, client events, it's giveaways, it's just listed, it's open house. We're mixing between static posts, images, videos, Facebook lives. We're trying to mix it up. So we're mixing up and creating a cadence where we're alternating our marketing channels on our Facebook page to show off our marketing skills and our tech savviness at the same time. So we pass the test because that's what they're looking at that page for. They want to see you look good. Okay. So that's the idea behind it. All right. So we're going to optimize that business page. We're going to link it to our personal page. We're going to make it look good. And we're going to use Canva to really, really make us look professional. And we can use Canva for all of our marketing. It can be our own little marketing suite. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal for that. Okay. So that's the idea behind it. Now, what I'm going to do for all you guys is I'm going to drop in an optimizing your Facebook business page workbook that kind of tells you how to do a lot of that, even how to create a new page if you haven't. It's a PDF. I just chopped it in the, the chat room for you. And I'm going to, I'll quickly show you what that looks like. Uh, it's, it's a course we have. I'm just kind of giving to you. I, I think I talked you through it pretty darn well, um, but I want you to kind of see it so you'll know what we're talking about here. But here you are, it's you're optimizing your Facebook business page for real estate agents. That's the cover page. And you'll be able to download that in the chat. And it kind of tells you a little bit about how to do this start to finish. You know, this tells you how to create a page from scratch, what to click on um, all the way through, how to name your page, how to upload all your photos, um, how to adjust your settings to manage the page properly, how to set up your different categories and how to create your page's name, which I talked about by using your name in there how to put up your uh, your cover image, you know, what to put on your cover image, things like that. Um, how to use Canva. I think we kind of covered that already as well too. How to find good photos, how to post with a cadence. Um, one thing that's really important on here is keywords. Knowing how to, to use really good keywords, which I'm gonna give you a keyword research tip. Understanding keywords is kind of a whole different animal and I will go into that with you in detail. It's a little bit more dialed in 
of a topic that I could talk about for hours, so I'm not going to go in too much, but it's important. We have some important keywords on your Facebook, right? Uh, it's on your Facebook page. So like, you know, you know, your name is one. I talked about your name because oftentimes they'll go search for you on your business page. Other things that you're going to want to have somewhere on your business page, like in your page's description, especially, you know, you want to make sure you put like your local city names because people search for houses by city or they might say realtor in that city or, you know, Brian Eisenhower in Los Angeles. Um, so they'll search for things that way. So in your actual description of your page, that's where you want to use some keys, keywords that, you know, that you're in real estate, um, homes for sale, and, and most importantly, your local cities, area names, county names, things like that. Okay. So I am going to give you that. I'll give you that after as well, too, so you can see how to research for, for those. To find the best keywords for your business page, you can actually go right into Google ads. It's free. Um, you can create a free account if you haven't already, and you can click on this tools and settings in the top menu. And then, and this all tells you how to do it. Don't worry. I put this in the, in the, in the, uh, chat room. So if you, if you're not, you don't have to write this down, you can go in there and take a look at this PDF and download it. Um, but you can go over here, your keyword, keyword planner right here. Okay. And then what's really cool, man, is you can discover new keywords and you can enter products and services closely related to your business, right? So it might be Los Angeles real estate or Ventura real estate or Pismo beach real estate or Fresno real estate or whatever. Okay. And then start to see what comes up. It'll start to show you the keywords that are most searched. Okay. Like Fresno homes for sale might show up instead of Fresno real estate, um, things like that. And then you'll use that keyword instead. Okay. And then you click the get results button and it shows up and it shows you all the results from that. And it'll actually show you all those results right down here. It'll show the number of people that search for it on a regular basis every month you know, 10,000 to a million people search for that. So anyway, that's kind of how it works. You don't need to buy anything or use it. This is free. It'll just give you an idea of what are the best words to use in a keyword search. Okay. So that's kind of the, the method behind finding keyword, just go into Google ads and try it. Right. Record the top five results that fit your business. You're going to use these everywhere. You can use them on your website a lot, anywhere you are online. We want to make sure these keywords are in the description, right? Um, and we talked about setting the Facebook page. So if these were your five keywords, which are not specific enough, but they're specific for, for this uh, workbook, we're gonna use them everywhere, right? And here's some examples of how to create a, a Facebook page description here, a few of those, and how we weave in those keywords a lot so they show up in searches, okay? So there's three different examples you can kind of steal from there too. Getting your Facebook page name and user uh, URL. Um, I think you know how to do that, but when you set up your page, you can edit page info and you can type in and see what available URLs are there for your name. Put them in a real estate company category if you'd like to, and that'll give you an idea of how to use it, right? Facebook page versus physical page. We already did that. And we discussed that early on, right? Now I'm going to show you a poor man's version of how to find keywords. Okay. Here's a poor man's version. Okay. So if you don't want to go into Google ads and log in, this won't show you all of the views, like going into Google ads and using their keyword planner. Google ads is keyword planner. We'll show you the number of views and get you real specific. But if you don't want to go through all that, you just want to hurry it up. If I type in Ventura homes, first thing it does is for sale. It shows me that I typed in Ventura homes and it, it, it put for sale there, not me, right? Oh, Ventura homes for rent, Ventura homes for sale near beach. Ventura Homes, Zillow. Oh, these are, that's a bummer. These are the most searched terms. It's gonna, Google is gonna give me suggestions based on what people search for. Makes sense? So I can know what people search for because Google is trying to do it for me. Now understand the more, what we call a long tail, right? So if I say homes for sale in Ventura, actually let's do it Ventura, I kind of like Ventura real estate. Okay, so it's Ventura Real Estate Zillow. Look at how many people type in Ventura Real Estate Zillow. That's scary, right? They have good name recognition. Ventura Real Estate Company, Ventura Real Estate Market, Ventura Real Estate Agents, Ventura Real Estate Listings. Okay, so people aren't really searching for homes by typing in Ventura Real Estate, clearly. But if we type in Ventura, Ventura Homes, now it's for sale right away. We can see Ventura Home, Ventura Homes, Ventura Homes for Rent. Boom, 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 boom. 
okay? The longer the description, we call that a long tail, the better, the more hyper-local you'll be, the more specific of a search you'll be, okay? And we call that a long tail. The longer you can make it without pigeonhole yourself so you don't see other things, like I'm not gonna see Oxnard, for example, I'm just gonna see Ventura. But if I say Ventura County, I might be wide enough to get Oxnard too. So you're, you, have a, you have a give and take you do that, that you need to do when you pick keywords. Choosing the right keywords is everything. It's a big, big deal in online marketing. Not super big for your business page. It's not super big for your Facebook, Facebook business page, but it's a very important consideration. Okay, so very quickly, I wanna to explain to you two other aspects or the other. I told you the first aspect, which takes the longest to explain is your business page is your website. Remember, it doesn't organically go out there like your posts do off your personal page and it doesn't really interact with the algorithm. But there are three other different ways we can use it, one of which I already alluded to, and that's a boosted post. You can, most of you know what this is. You can boost your post. You can spend some money on Facebook to boost your post, okay? That's not to be confused with Facebook ads. That's our third method, okay? So you can run ads on Facebook. That's different than a boosted post, okay? And I'm gonna tell you the difference between the two, but they're both ways to spend money and generate leads on Facebook. A boosted post means you post something on your timeline. Like I showed you on that one Facebook business page, I showed you that one video of that client event that had all this interaction because that post was boosted, which means they then clicked a little button beneath their post on their page that says, boost this post. You click on that boost this post button and you can do a few things, right? You can then target who you're gonna boost it to. It could be people in a certain geographic location. Okay, they, they boosted that post to the entire city because they were doing a city client event. It was like a city-wide festival slash block party client event where they invited thousands of people and thousands showed up. You can target by geographic location. You can also target by occupation. Everybody that's a real estate agent, everybody that works for Remax, everybody that works for a certain company that has a certain job. So you can, you can target it by anything that they put into their profile, like where they work or the type of industry they work in. You can target only those people in only a certain geographic location. So I'm dialing it in. You can boost it to just your friends on Facebook as well too, which would in theory be your sphere of influence. Make sense? You can actually determine how long it runs. Typically you can run it up to 14 days, I think. That's the max run which I tend to prefer. I find that if you run it spread out the same amount of, it'll reach the same amount of people either way. But if you spread it out over a longer period of time, it gets shared more and interacted with more and it keeps popping up in people's timelines more. So you can set a budget. I mean, you can spend quite a bit of money if you want, but it doesn't take much. You get a lot of people to see it and you'll get a lot of people to interact with it. So if you, you know, if you've got a nice, really nice high-end listing and you get a great drone video shot of it and you're in it talking about how great it shows, that might be worth boosting to a certain geographic location nearby or your sphere of influence. Start marketing yourself. Now understand boosting posts as opposed to advertising on Facebook is a lot more for general branding. It's just for engagement, getting likes, getting follows on your page, getting comments down below. It's really for general branding. It's not really for generating leads. If you want to generate leads, we go to running Facebook ads. Okay, Facebook ads are not a post on your business page timeline. You actually create the ad and you get to actually go into Facebook's ads manager. And this could be, and this is an entire separate course that we teach, but I will go into this someday if you want to, how to use ad manager, It'll probably bore you to death because it's a lot of diagnostics. It's like you're looking at, you know, an EKG monitor and you're really dialing in to really targeted audiences, real targeted demographics. And you're really trying to target with Facebook ads. You're going to get people to actually sign up or buy now or click through to your website things like that, more complex calls to action, more, so, this is for lead generation. This is gonna generate leads. Know what my house is worth. We don't do that through a boosted post. We do that through running an ad, okay? Cause it's, you're spending too much money. We gotta be able to track the demographics afterwards to the analytics of how the post did and how it can be approved, improved are excellent. And don't, and don't forget, a lot of people don't know this. Facebook has really good Facebook ads 
customer service representatives. They will show you how to do this well. They'll walk you through it with the most amazing customer service. Why? Because they want you to succeed at it because running Facebook ads costs money where you got to pay Facebook. So make sure you respond to what kind of look like spammy emails from your Facebook rep trying to help you. Do it, schedule a time and get help from him because he'll make it so you can convert at a high level or shill, I should say, whatever. Make sense? So work with them to run ads because they're much more targeted much more targeted, much more customizable uh, by way of your purpose, by way of your audience, by way of your call to action. So if you're going to spend money on Facebook, that's where your Facebook page can come in too, because you can go out and get your post aggressive, just not in an organic fashion like you can in your personal page by working the algorithm. We actually have to, have to spend money off the business page to get interactions. Okay. Now, lastly, Probably my favorite thing to do with a Facebook business page is a kind of a newer thing. It's called Facebook retargeting. Okay. It's called Facebook retargeting. And this costs money too. It's the third way to run ads. It's not at Facebook running Facebook ads. It's kind of a type of Facebook ad, but you're retargeting your own database. So what that means is you have a database, maybe on a CSV file, Microsoft Excel sheet or something like that on your computer. Maybe it's your sphere of influence. Maybe it's your geographic farm and you upload that. So long as you have contact information that include emails, you can upload that into Facebook and then you can run ads retargeted back at your own database that you gave Facebook. It's magic. So what Facebook does is they look for all of these users on Facebook with the email addresses you gave them and they run your ads back at your own database. So imagine you have a client event and you want to invite and you, you've emailed them, you've called them, you texted them, but wouldn't it be cool if they went on Facebook and they just kept seeing your client event, only them, not the public, because it's a client event. You just want to invite your clients, the people, you know, not a bunch of randoms. So they go on Facebook and they just keep seeing your client event until ultimately they click on it and go, or you're a brand new agent. And one of the other agents in the office lets you borrow their $3 million listing to show a just listed an open house and make it look like it's yours. And you want your whole SOI to see that. Well, you can run ads back at your own SOI database on Facebook. So they all see instantly, oh my gosh, Brian may be a new agent, but he's a freaking awesome agent. He's already listed million dollar properties. That guy's on fire. You know, maybe we should list with Brian rather than your cousin. Your cousin doesn't seem to ever sell anything. So all of a sudden you evidence your success in a hurry. A brand new agent in their first year or two should be doing this left and right. Because yes, all your people on Facebook know you, trust you, and love you, but they don't really trust you to list their house yet. So you need to evidence that success quickly by showing them your kick and tail. The way you show them your kick and tail is posting a lot of evidence of that. Videos of Facebook videos, maybe you run that as a retargeted ad back at them of you hoping an open house, a just listed video, um, a sale pending post. All of a sudden you're branding and showing at the end of six months, they'll think you've been selling for five or 10 years. They forgot, they'll forget you're a new agent, right? Or you could upload your geographic farm database, right? You could actually take the database and all the email addresses of people that are in a certain neighborhood that you're trying to be the neighborhood expert for, upload that into Facebook. And now every time a neighbor in that neighborhood goes onto Facebook, all they're gonna see is you marketing homes in that neighborhood. The post might all say the Crestwood Estates neighborhood expert. Here's another Crestwood open house. Here's a just listed in Crestwood. You see what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, everywhere they go, they just see you dominating. And that's because you actually gave Facebook the database and told it to retarget ads back at your own database. Make sense? So those are your four main uses. Use it like your website on Facebook. Use it to boost posts, spend a little money. Use it to run ads, spend a little bit more money, but get really good ads. And number four, retarget ads back at your database. Those are the four best and most often used uses of a Facebook business page. The one that I didn't say was organic posts. So if you're just posting things on your business page and you're hoping it to get out there and people to see it, they're only gonna see it if they come to your business page. Because remember, it just doesn't have enough engagement from the people you know for Facebook to show. So post that stuff on your, on your personal page. Work the algorithm, use our rotation, post more personal posts on your business, on your personal page and weave in a business post every now and then, okay?